Rebu Mall is located towards the uh, southwestern end of Mount Hagen City. Under pine, eucalyptus and other local trees, the Archdiocese of Mount Hagen has all the attributes of a Catholic establishment, schools, health outlets and a central church with all the backups on a 100 hectares of land. It is here that pioneer missionary Father William Ross first set foot in 1934. Father Ross and his party were met by local Mogi chiefs Ninchi Kama and Sir Wamp One. All are now diseased, but the relationships they fostered and the visions they set endure to today. In 2009, Rebiamo, the Mount Hagen Archdiocese and the Highlands celebrated 75 years of missionary work. There are now more than half a million Catholics in the Highlands. In the Western Highlands province and Jawaka, there are 160,000. That represents more than 28% of the population there, followed by the Lutherans on 25%. The balance is made up of a number of other denominations. Yupela olbrata nasista bilongumi. Yupela ol people bilong Papua New Guinea. In 1984, some 150,000 Catholics in the Highlands region flocked into Mount Hagen for Pope John Paul II's visit. But it's not just been numbers, spiritual or pastoral fulfillment. Father Ross, who died in the early 1970s, and is buried at Rebiamol will be happy to know that the Catholic Church is heavily involved in education. The Archdiocese today manages 33% of all educational activities in the province. Leading is the Holy Trinity Teachers College with affiliations to the Divine Word University. In the health sector, it provides 30% of all health services it leads with efforts to arrest the spread of the HIV virus. The church took on this challenge in 1987 when the government denied the prevalence of HIV AIDS. It's now spread to an epidemic proportion. The life and future of the Archdiocese is in part shouldered by 16 local priests and hundreds of missionary religious men and women Central to the church activities is the cathedral. It has a significant role in church history. Father Ross built a bush material church here where the camera is standing. What you are seeing is the existing pro-cathedral built in 1962 by Father Ross. It is the venue for daily and weekly masses, civil events such as weddings, opening for school years, among others. The high moment for the Mount Hagen Archdiocese will be next year, when work will eventually begin on a new cathedral at Rebiamol. <laughs> it was a dream of Bishop Bernarding, uh, our founding Archbishop of Mount Hagen, and he passed it on to Archbishop Meyer, and now Archbishop Meyer has passed it on to me, and I don't feel I can pass it on to anyone else. I feel we have to complete You've got to make sure it's erect. I feel we have to do it. There are several reasons for the timing of the cathedral at this stage. Above all else, it is seen as the crowning of the church work in the Highlands after 75 years, and also reaffirms a renewed commitment to continue. Furthermore, the new cathedral marks a turning point towards self-reliance. Devoted Raphael Goya is the head 
of the fundraising committee. So me blow like him assistance long all get a man and me go through long man and Mary go through long Catholic church long education now. He got big blow walk long Papua New Guinea. Please me ask him you blow long contribute now. He got two million stuff yet. So me blow people long uh, hanging dices in a nap long contribute. And me blow all man blow place stuff. The message has gone out to all that there is a shortfall of two million kina towards the target of eight. Bishop, and we come up on them this idea, and we set them up committee. Na we blow amamas, lo bung on them, lo make him some like a form of contribution long. Uh, look forward long. New blow cathedral, and we blow young blood, we play. We play amamas long. We blow ready good straight long. Uh, play music. Next three years, all now we block at all different uh, outstations and stuff. Uh. But the new block cathedral, me believe also more all Catholic faith yet. But come now, uh, pull my this la cathedral where uh, capacity belong me by now me no save yet. I think chairman block fundraising now instead of playing and uh, me no save clearly this la. But me believe also member pull him. Uh, Holy Trinity, Kuta, all get out station. Me, me, me believe was all Catholic faith, but come Amamas, now all the Lucian slow out station now for the first two, three years, but all come lot to lot this big black editor. By January next year, a backhoe will scoop up a bucket of ground from this field, signaling the start of construction work, which will take about 18 months. It could even take two years. When all the meticulous architectural work come together, the new cathedral will be a landmark in Mount Hagen, in the Highlands, and even in Papua New Guinea. It will also rejuvenate intense spiritual interests that was evident during the times of pioneer missionary Father William Ross. But then, after 75 years, there are now new paths to take and challenges to confront. The paths and the challenges will revolve around the cathedral. When completed, it will be a modern state-of-the-art nerve center for the archdiocese. Seating capacity will be 2,000. There will be sufficient space for processions, a choir area, toilets, and even access for the disabled. A conference room can seat 40. A religious bookshop and a canteen will also be built in. The cathedral will also be fitted with audiovisual capabilities. The church's Trinity FM, now broadcast near the residence of the Archbishop, will operate within the cathedral. The obvious practical advantages will be live broadcasts. The exterior will be suitable for large outdoor gatherings. A unique feature will be the provision for tombs within the cathedral for the bodies of Father William Ross and Archbishop George Bernarding, whose bodies are now buried at Rebimol Cemetery. There will also be tombs at the cathedral for future archbishops of the diocese. Bernarding was establishment bishop, Maya was more into youths. What would be your special passion apart from whatever else you have to do as archbishop? My orientation uh, coming from an academic background and a planning background, I put my emphasis on pastoral planning, uh, trying to ensure that as many people as possible are taking part in the life of the church, that we have high level of participation, and that we go forward, that we grow and develop in a kind of organic and planned way.